Hey guys, so my name's Chaim Shalom. I just want to share with you some, I don't want to say words of wisdom, words of wisdom, that's what I'm going to call it. I'm excited to share, I have a lot to share, and I'm trying out the um, YouTube and, and video, and I'm not liking necessarily the angle of the camera, so I'm going to figure all that stuff as we go. But I I, I learned so much, and there's so much to, to give and share that you guys are hearing or not hearing. But I wanted to share this from, from this book, two paragraphs, and I'm gonna give some insights on my thoughts as we go along, and you guys can let me know what you think too. Um, the book is called Duties of the Heart, and as you can see, it's backwards apparently. Um, so maybe someone in the comments can say, hey, if you just do something like this, it'll be an easy fix. So maybe like and share the video, and check in the comments below and tell me how to switch this so it will show it properly when you guys see it. Or maybe it does and I just have to wait till the editing time comes. Um, so here we go, I'm gonna go ahead and start reading for you a little bit, just two paragraphs and I'll give some insights on the way. If he relies, oh this is from, this is from the, the gate of trust in this book of Duties of the Heart. If he relies on his great wealth, it will be taken from him and left to someone else. As it says in scripture, he lies down rich and it is not taken away. He opens his eyes and it is gone. Poof. That's from Eof. Do not toil to get rich, to get wealthy. Of your own understanding, desist. You don't have to toil necessarily to get wealthy. If you're meant to be wealthy, God's going to give it to you. Meaning, don't sit on your tush, but actually go out and do something and that... and. And God's going to make you wealthy. But don't toil crazy. I think the toilings in the Chassidus, I think it talks about toiling with your mind and your heart. You should toil with your hands only. Before you can set your eyes on it, it is gone in Mishle. At a young age, it will leave him. And at his end, he will be, very, he will be a disgrace. Or else he will be denied the opportunity of enjoying it. As the wise man King Solomon said, but the Almighty does not give him the power to enjoy it. That's based on Kohalis. He has it merely as a deposit to keep out of harm's way until it reaches someone who is worthy of it. As it says, but to the sinner he gives the work of gathering and amassing to hand over to, who, to one who is good before God. That's also from Kohalis. You think about it, you know, is your job in this world to just amass wealth? Or is your job to do what God wants? And for us Jews, God wants us to do Torah mitzvahs. That's what he gave us. He said, here's the blue book. The, here's the blue book on what to do, the blueprint. And here's the Torah and the mitzvahs. And it will be good for you. It's a, it's a Torah of life. So... It's not about wealth amassment. God's going to give you the amassment that you need, but he may give it to, if you're doing good deeds and, and what you're supposed to be doing, he may give it to someone who's working their butt up and being scheming and conniving, but then he, he can just, he's just going to take it away and give it to someone else. That's what it seems. So, that, so do good. He prepares it, but the righteous man will wear it. And... The innocent man will divide the silver. That's also an Eov. His wealth may also be the cause of his undoing and the loss of his soul. As it says, there is an evil affliction that I have observed under the sun, wealth reserved for its owner for his misfortune. That sounds horrible. I'm going to make a bunch of money and I'm going to have lots of tzurth, lots of difficulties and troubles? God forbid. So... It's not about making money. It's not about going out there. You're going to get money by doing good things. It's, I think that's the way that's, it's going to come to you. That's what I'm, when people follow these things, law of attraction, this and that. But money is going to come to you by you doing good. This is what I think it's meaning potentially. But you can comment in the, in the below and let me know. Another advantage of this trust is that it has the following effect. One who trusts in God is not sub, uh, will not submit to another. He will not set his hopes on any man or put his trust in human beings. How freeing is this? How many of you go out there and you're literally, I'm gonna, I have to impress this guy, impress that guy. 
you, if you're doing what God wants, who's, God is the one who can give everything. He can give, He can take, He can do everything. You are going to say that you're going to have to impress this person to try to, try to fit in with them. No. You're not going to try to impress someone in order that they should be on your good side. No. If they're doing good, you're going to probably hang out with them because they're doing good, you're doing good, and you want to do good together. And that will bring more good. He will not be subservient to them or in, in order to win their favor, nor will he flatter them. He will not agree with them in what is not the service of God. Their ways will not frighten him, and he will not be afraid to oppose them. He will divest himself of the finery of their favors and free himself from the burden of expressing gratitude to them and the obligation of repaying them. When reproving them, he will not shrink from offending them. If he humiliates them, he will not be timid before them or adorn what is false. That one's kind of hard for me because I don't like to be reproving someone. And in Chassidus, you reprove someone who is on your level. But those who are not necessarily on your level, you want to bring back with cords of love. So you help them get to your level, and then when they're at your level, <laughs> then, you can, then you can reprove them if you need to. But you have to do it just like a, when a person goes to a doctor, when a person goes to a doctor and gets a shot, the doctor doesn't just give the shot. First, he rubs it with some alcohol and then gives a shot. He cleans it. Otherwise, the shot would have a negative effect. So in order, in order that you want to, you, you got to, uh, there's a story, there's a story, there's a story that um, if, if you're walking, I think it's from the previous Lubavitcher Rebbe, when you're walking down the street, if you're walking down the street and someone to hit you with some branches, what would you do? You're going to stop, what are you doing, you're crazy. But if you bring them to a nice sauna, I don't know if you've ever been to a sauna, you bring them to a nice sauna, they sit into the sauna and they get all warm and hot and the, and then you come in with some eucalyptus branches and you start whacking them. It has this aroma and, the, and it, it, the pores are open and the guy says, hit me more, hit me more. When we were approving someone, it's got to be, they gotta, they're going to tell you, hit me more, hit me more. But when you're approving someone and they're saying, ah, get away from me, then you know that they're not on your level and, and you probably... But if they're saying, hit me more, it's because you warm them up. You brought them to your level. They're on your level. They are your friend now. And therefore, you can hit them more. And they're going to ask for more and more and more. Anyways. As the prophet said, but God Hashem helps me. Therefore, I will not be humiliated. Therefore, I have set my face like a flint. And I know that I will not be timid. That's from... Uh, uh, I, I'm reading from English, so it's kind of hard. Yeshayahu. Do not be afraid of them, and do not fear their words. Do not fear their words, and do not be intimidated by them. Ezekiel. I don't know why the back and forth, but it must mean something more, and I'm not reading into it, but maybe in the Hebrew, which we could look at possibly later, uh, might make it more clear as to why the, it seems rep repetition. But do not be afraid of them, uh, Yermiyahu. It says in another source. Do not be intimidated by them. It's also in your Miyahu. I have made your forehead like stone, harder than flint. Do not fear them and do not be intimidated by them. That's in Ezekiel. So the forehead like stone, you might say, oh, what do you mean? Nothing's gonna, they're not gonna break you. They can't break you. When you're, when you're attached to God, they're not going to be able to break you. I'm trying to keep this video under 10 minutes. I really wanted to do it less, but we're almost at the 10-minute mark, so I want to say thank you so much for watching. Let me know what your thoughts are on this. Uh, if you liked what you heard so far, you're going to love what's going, going on next. Um, we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about a, an alchemist and someone who, who tried to scheme and plan and make, and make um, gold out of different metals. And we're going to talk about how you don't have to be an alchemist because you have a reliance and trust on God. It's even, it's on such a higher level that you wouldn't even want, there's no need to scheme. So have peace uh, with what you're doing and let's get this done before it's 10 minutes. Have a wonderful day.